what type of value paying one? Today we're going to do question number three from the 2021 exam, and it's on cellular respiration. So they give us a little bit of background. Researchers hypothesized that a plant compound improves mitochondrial function. To test this, the researchers dissolve that compound into the DMSO. The solution rarely passes through cell membranes. They add that uh, different solution to the mammal cells, um, growing in a nutrient-rich solution that contains glucose. They then measure the ATP production at several points and discover that there was an increase in ATP production by muscle cells. So question uh, A is asking us a biology question. It's always going to ask us some type of content uh, information. So describe the primary advantage for mammalian muscle cells in aerobic respiration over fermentation. So you have to think to yourself, okay, what happens in aerobic respiration? Well, we go through glycolysis and produce two ATP. We go through Krebs cycle and produce another two ATP. And then we go through oxidative phosphorylation, which produces 34 to 36 ATP molecules. So with aerobic respiration, we make 36 to 38 ATPs. But in fermentation, we're only going to make the two ATPs in glycolysis, and then we ferment. Because the point of fermentation is to regenerate the NAD plus that's needed to hold the electrons as you oxidize glucose in its different um, intermediates afterward. So the advantage would be that we produce more ATP molecules with aerobic respiration. So let's see what the student said. Aerobic respiration can produce up to 36 ATP molecules from a single glucose, while fermentation produces only two ATP. This means the cells produce more energy per glucose molecule with aerobic respiration. So part B is looking at an experiment or a component of the experimental design. So identify an appropriate negative control for this experiment that would allow the research to conclude that ATP is produced in response to the treatment. So negative controls are going to allow us to see, okay, if I don't have the independent variable, what would happen? Um, and it's going to prove that that independent variable actually does have an effect on the experiment. So they dissolved that chemical into DMSO, and then they added that to the muscle cells, and they had it in uh, the media that had glucose, and then they then measured the ATP. So our independent variable is that uh, compound that we have added to the solution. And then our dependent variable is the amount of ATP that's produced. So if I wanted an appropriate negative control, I just take out the um, reciprocal, or however you say that word, <laughs> um, or you would treat the cells with DMSO alone, because that means that I have only the independent variable in there. So the student says the negative control would be to repeat the experiment um, without that uh, plant compound. And so then C says predict the effect of short-term ATP production when these uh, cells are treated when there's lacking glucose or other sugars. So we all know that glycolysis starts with glucose. So if you don't have the starting material, can you make any of the ATP in aerobic respiration? Well, no, because you don't have the starting material. But glucose isn't the only thing that we use in aerobic respiration. We also use like the amino acids and we can use um, the, the, uh, the glycerol that's on your fatty acids. We can use the... Um, the uh, hydrophobic tails, those hydrocarbon tails um, that we have in our uh, fats, we're able to break those up and just put them straight into the Krebs cycle. So you're going to find there's either no ATP made or that there's a reduced amount of ATP. It'd be reduced because, of course, you're missing the glucose, which, of course, we know makes 36 to 38 ATPs. So they said ATP production will decrease, says will not have the carbohydrates to utilize for respiration in the production of energy. And then the last question we have is to justify something. So they're going to tell us something, and we have to justify that claim. So the researchers find that this stimulates the production of the components of the electron transport chain. They claim that the treatment will increase oxygen consumption by cells if the glucose is not limiting. So if I have an unlimited supply of glucose, they expect that there would be an increase in oxygen consumption because this plant chemical works with the electron transport chain. Well, the electron transport chains final electron acceptor is oxygen. So if you have an improved functionality of the electron transport chain, then you're going to have more oxygen consumption. And so the justification would be that oxygen is the final electron acceptor. So if I have more electrons in the electron transport chain, I would require more oxygen to accept those electrons. So the student talks, they said uh, oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor for the electron transport chain. If that uh, Plant chemicals stimulate the production of ETC. The electron transfer chain would become more active and require more oxygen and molecules to transfer electrons to who when establishing that proton gradient. So I hope that was helpful. And remember, AP Biopenguins just success. Bye, y'all.